Good evening. I wrap Steen with your Metal Market Wrap Up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Thursday, and we're at the 11th of April, 2024, 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Interesting market and the gold on a tear again. You know, today I threw in the towel in my writing to my clients, and I just said, listen, because you're over the upper bow and you're being on the weekly chart, it's hard for me to want to be a buyer. But if you, if you have to get in, you go in now. And this was just around, I think I wrote it about 11.50 in the morning. I probably put it out around uh, noon. And that wasn't bad advice because the market took off from that time and I could just see what was happening. And uh, basically, it doesn't mean I was going to be right. What I was telling clients is on the, just switch over and if you lose on the lead month, on the daily chart, the embedded reading, use that because it's hard to watch these markets go when you can't participate in them. And I get that. And some of you have written me about that. And just the way it works. Sometimes no system can catch everything. Some systems catch nothing. I've missed some of the big moves uh, the beginning of the year. You know, so we're only, think about it, we're 90, 100 days into the year. So it's not as though a lot has gone by, but I've also caught some big moves, uh, you know, especially if, if you go over to my spider ETF videos, those have been kicking butt. Um, to make a long story short, I thought today, and I also wrote this in my commentary, would be the day that the lower Bollinger Bands would start grabbing hold in the stock indices because we've just removed another bearish element to the market. The PCI that came out today was moderate. It was not hot like the CPI number. And in the CPI number, I want to go on record. You got three months in a row of higher numbers. That's a trend. Two isn't, three is. So when you get to three numbers and they're a trend now, in order to get the trend going down, you got to start rolling that we're going to start seeing things for April, May, and June go down. Some people think, well, that'll open up if it occurs, the July timeframe. But I think September, if you're looking for a rate cut, is the first possible opening. And I didn't say probable. I'm being very careful with my wording because we're in a stall. Inflation has gone into a stall to higher mode. The PCI didn't, but it's made up differently. And that tells me when you take the two and you put them into the PCE, if you understand the math, you're probably going to get a PCA that isn't red hot, but it's probably not going to be weak either. And that gives you a problem for at least the coming up one. We'll see if the one after this comes out the same way and what it does as well. And that's April 26th. Now, you can see that the dollar got up over the 105 area. Tonight, we're getting a little bit of a rally in some of the currencies. Uh, did you watch Miss Lagarde on Bloomberg uh, and watch what she said? She made it at least two times, maybe three. She is not promising that there will be a June cut. What she is saying is the members are leaning that way. The data has to verify that, and if it is, then the door is open to it. But as for a promise that you're going to get that, no. And as I said, she said it more than two times that I heard. I, I recall that. So you're sitting here at 107, but that market was down hard, all right? And the markets are saying that the rally, to me at least, that the rally we just saw until you take out the most recent rally highs in the euro, the pound, and those markets, those might have been the rally highs that we have to deal with for a while. So when I come to the gold market, number one, it's fighting off a rally in the dollar. Number two, it is fighting off very successfully a rally in interest rates. I mean, you're up near 4.6 in the 10-year uh, note. I mean, that's a big number. Mortgages are back to 6.88% on a 30-year fixed, according to uh, what was Freddie Mac today. So as you look at how this is all coming up here, gold's going right through that like it doesn't exist. Has Iran done anything against Israel? No, but the threat is live. It's there. Iran is letting it be known that they have no intent of escalating everything in the Middle East, but Israel's going to be punished. I think it's code words through its proxies. They're going to hit Israel. It could be many fronts at one time. It could be who knows. They'll, they'll plan what they want. And they'll come out measured, and uh, they don't want to be criticized for it, but they have to show that Israel can't get away with hitting one of their diplomatic centers, and that's what they're saying. So we're all waiting. Lufthansa today, by the way, extended. Today was supposed to be the day that uh, 
no flights to or from uh, Tehran, they've extended it out two more days because everybody's nervous. You don't want one of your planes in the air with passengers and all of a sudden missiles are flying. Higher lows, higher highs. Still got the pattern here, the swing line certainly to the upside. All the moving averages are under the market. And the resistance point keeps getting hit. In fact, you got over it for several days. And now you've got that gorilla glue trade. The gorilla glue trade is simply this. It's when the market day after day hits the Bollinger Band, takes it and eventually gets it to embed. Embedding means the two numbers that make it up are going sideways over the 80 level, and they just keep moving to the upside with that. And that's pretty much what I see going on in this market at this point in time. So as I'm looking at how the market's going there, still a lot of strength. The gold-silver ratio still coming to the downside. As I look at the silver market, again, sort of riding with that Gorilla Glue trade, more strength seeing there. Copper, not the same picture. The copper market is definitively bullish, but it's flirting with even losing the embedded reading. At this point, it's still bullish. But if that number closes under 79, you might be in for a little bit of a store of the market going more sideways, could even drift back here for a little bit towards the 18-day average. Platinum is super strong staying up there. And the dollar index, as you can see, is up to the upper Bollinger Band in strength. Now, as I look at these markets and we talk about them, tomorrow you're going to get the import-export price data. You're going to get the University of Michigan's preliminary April consumer sentiment indices. You got the Atlanta Fed President Bostic coming out, who give you his ideas, I hope, as to what he thinks of the market. But he's basically been a hawk most of the time here, so I don't see anything here that's going to take him out of that. And I'm now released for the general public my full new charting course. And it's in this one you get the swing lines, the moving averages. Every chapter is brand new. Went through this. There's 45 video chapters in it. You get the charting software that I use, the ones that you see here, or our QT platform, if you've had that before, the, uh, the full charting software in the past year. 45 chapters covering swing lines, moving averages, slow stochastics, Bollinger Bands, how often you hear me talk about these, and how I use window envelopes, which is something you don't see here, but it's in play every single day as far as I'm concerned. So you put those together, you're trying to figure out how to work with them. It's only five indicators. I believe that when I'm through, and this is how my charts look each morning in my, in my subscriber videos, you will all of a sudden say, wait a minute, I see what he's talking about. And from here, you can build. You can do whatever you want. You can add, take out indicators. You can do what you want. But I think I give you really cool basics to work with. And instead of just examples in here, each morning you get my full research. You get my spider ETF video, you get my morning subscriber video. Why? Because I go over all your learning and I bring it out here. And I do it over and over to the point where it sinks in. You can write me questions, I'll answer them on this, but it's pretty simple. All my brokers are versed on it, by the way. You get all of this. Just to give you an idea, the charting software by itself is worth $160. We throw it in. My full research and my spider ETF video for one month is another 76. That's $230. And we're giving you 10% off the course. You're going to find that this is interesting, fun, a good way, I think, for you to uh, approach the technical analysis of markets, especially if you like what I'm doing here. You'll be able to do it. IRAPSTEIN.COM under the word education. Move your cursor up here. That 10% discount, this is an inaugural price. It's not going to be around too long. So if you're interested, good time to take advantage of it. And the course begins when you decide to activate it. So you may buy it now to take advantage of 10% and not take it to the summer. That's up to you. We turn everything on once you activate the, the charting course. IRAPSTEIN.COM under education. Take care.